Hello everyone, good on the native god here. So now we're going to look at a problem where we are going to make use of the continuity equation. Right? So we will get to see when and how we can use the continuity equation. Right? And it reads as follows. A pipe of diameter 120 millimeters tapers to a diameter of 230 millimeters in the direction of flow. Right? So which means as far as the direction of flow, the direction of flow follows how the pipe tapers, right? They said the pipe tapers from a smaller diameter to a bigger diameter, right? Meaning the entry of the water in the pipe is on the smaller section of the pipe, right? And the exit of the water is on the bigger section of the pipe. Hence, we see the one on this section and the two on that section. Remember that the entry we take is one and the exit we take is two right now as far as the direction of flow right i said the direction of flow is such that it follows how the pipe tapers right so this will be our direction of flow of water right now of course i always advise students to always try to draw a free body diagram right so that you have an idea of the direction of the forces in conjunction with acceleration which will tell us right which will tell us um the kind of pressure that is subjected to the smaller section of the pipe relative to the pressure subjected to the bigger section of the pipe right now you know that you have f2 going in that direction you have f1 going in this direction right now we do know that as far as velocity velocity is much higher or velocity is much faster in the smaller end of the pipe right and then in the bigger end of the pipe right it is much it is much slower right so meaning since v1 or since one is the smaller section of the pipe it means v1 will be greater than v2 right now regarding acceleration of the fluid it means that the fluid is decelerating right so if the fluid is decelerating it means that acceleration is in that direction meaning f2 is greater than f1 Right, so we know from dynamics that the force is going the same direction as acceleration we take as being greater than the force is going against acceleration, meaning that we expect P2 to be greater than P1. Right, so that's our free body diagram, and then now let's look at what you've been given. Right now we're given d1 and d1 is 0 0.12 meters we are also given d2 which is 0 comma we're also given d2 which is 0 comma 23 meters right we are also given so both P1 and P2, so P1 is 80 kilopascals, right, P2 is 140 kilopascals, right. Now, as you can see, as predicted, right, as predicted, right, P2 is greater than P1. Now, if you look at our... The values of P1 and P2, right? They basically say that P2 is greater than P1. So meaning we are correct here. Right? Right, so with both P1 and P2, what else do you have? Mm, so we don't have V1. We also do not have V2. They also didn't give us the flow rate, right? So 
in cases where you haven't been given the flow rate that is when you make use of the continuity equation right now if you look at the question covered the quantity of water flowing through the pipe so they are looking for q so q is what we are actually looking for right so in order for us to get q we need at least one of the v's so either v1 or v2 right so we're going to get v1 and v2 using the continuity equation right in conjunction with um one of the Pinoli's equations right so first let's calculate the velocity right because we know that in applying Pinoli's theorem we need pressure we need velocity and we need the height right so since we're looking at a horizontal pipe we know that h1 and h2 are equal right and then as far as velocity we're going to calculate the velocity right and then as far as pressure we've been given both pressures right so since we're missing both v1 and v2 it means that we have to express we have to express one of the v's in terms of the other one so meaning we are either going to express v1 in terms of v2 or express v2 in terms of v1 so that in the Benoli equation that we're going to be using we only have one unknown right so first let's uh, let's use um the continuity equation so as far as the continuity equation we know that q1 is equal to q2 meaning area one times v1 is equal to area two times v2 right so we are going to solve for v1 here right so meaning we are going to express v1 in terms of v2 right you can choose to do it the other way around that's fine right but i will be solving for v1 meaning i'm going to express v1 in terms of v2 right so solving for v1 means i have to divide both sides by a1 right so v1 is essentially equal to area 2 which is pi over 4 d2 squared times v2 over area 1 which is pi over 4 d1 squared right now obviously the pi over 4 is the same so that will cancel and so v1 will be equal to now in substituting d2 is 0 0.23 so e squared times v1 i mean v2 which we do not have over d1 and d1 was 120 millimeters so this is 0 0.12 squared right now if you punch this in your calculators we are going to get 3,674 v2 all right so i've expressed v1 in terms of v2 meaning that in applying Benoli or in using uh, Benoli's equations right as far as v1 I'll express v1 in terms of v2 so that in the Benoli's equation I only have one unknown right now as far as which variation of Benoli's to use right you can use any of the variations of Benoli's right meaning you can use energy per unit volume you can use energy per unit mass right just re to remind ourselves let me just quickly show you the different variations of pinolis right so you can use any of these variations of pinoli right you can use this one you can use this one or you can use this one it doesn't really matter right but i always prefer to use the variation of pinolis that is convenient for what i'm looking for right so the one that is convenient for what i'm looking for is energy per unit mass because this one each of these terms is in terms of velocity right so that would be this one each of the terms in this Benoli's equation is in terms of velocity right so that's the one i'm going to go with otherwise again you can use any of the variations right you're going to get the same answer right right now as far as the energy per unit mass 
as we know p1 over rho plus v1 squared over 2 plus gh so gh1 is equal to p2 over rho plus v2 squared over 2 right plus gh2 right so because we're looking at a horizontal tapered pipe we know the h's are the same so this will cancel with that right now let's substitute right now p1 we know is equal to 80 kilopascals so this will be 80 times a thousand so 80 times 10 to the 3 pascals right over the density of water which we always take as a thousand and the stipulated otherwise right v1 is essentially equal to 3,674 v2 so this will be 3,674 v2 remember this is all squared over 2 right is equal to p2 which was equal to 140 kilopascals so this will be 140 times a thousand over rho which is a thousand plus v2 so this will be v2 squared over two right now this will cancel that this will cancel with that so this side you are left with the 80 plus now the 3,674 squared is equal to 13,498, right? And then the V2 is squared. So V2 squared over 2 is equal to 140 plus the V2 squared over 2 right now simplifying this further you will have 80 plus right the 6 so 13 comma 498 divided by 2 is actually equal to the 6 comma 749 so 6 comma 749 is with v2 squared is equal to the 140 right plus right half is the same as 0 comma 5 v2 squared right and then from this point you simply just group like terms right now in grouping like terms this side will be left with 6 comma 749 v2 squared minus 0 comma 5 v2 squared is equal to the 140 minus the 80 right now, if you punch this in your calculators, the comma seven four five minus the zero comma five, right? We get six comma two four nine v two squared is equal to one forty minus eighty is equal to sixty, right? Now that means that solving for v two, you have to divide both sides by the six comma two four nine. 6,429 as right, so obviously that cancels right and then to get rid of a squared you have to right you have to use the square root for both sides so meaning eventually you will have v2 and then the right hand side you have the square root of 60 over the 6,249 right now the square root of 60 over 6,249 you punch that in your calculators it will be equal to 3,099 meters per second right so that's the value of v2 right so now that you have v2 and we have we also have the diameter for the second section of the or the exit section of the pipe right now we can calculate the flow rate right remember in calculating the flow, the flow rate you don't need both v1 and v2 right 
because the flow rate is the same throughout the fluid's motion, right? So meaning you can use either V1 or V2. So since we solve for V2, we are simply going to use V2 to calculate Q, right? You know the flow rate, right? In terms of the exit section of the pipe is going to be A2 times V2, right? So this will be pi over 4 D2 squared times V2, right? So this will be pi over 4 into the diameter D2 is 0 0.23 squared times the velocity we just calculated, which is 3.099 meters per second. Now, if you punch this in your calculators, you're going to get 0 0.129 cubic meters per second, or you can express it in terms of liters, right? Since it's a small number and say, this is equal to 128.756 liters, right, per second. Right, either one works. So had you had you solve for V1, right? After calculating V1, then calculating the flow rate, you would get the same answer. Right. Hopefully this was easy to follow. Right. If you have any questions, feel free to post the questions in the comment section and I'll do my best to answer any and all questions. I'll see you in the next video.